Well, look at this. Welcome to season two of Chefs and Lambos by Chef David Hill. And today we are in beautiful Naples here at the uh, Quarry Country Club. And I got a big chef here, Chef Ron Duprat. And I'll let you introduce yourself and kind of tell me what you're up to and everything. My name is Ron Duprat. I'm a chef. Some of you may see me on Top Chef, Iron Chef, Bar Rescue, Good Morning America, and Beat Bobby Flair. And Naples was always home, and I'm so excited to be with you. Cool. Well, Chef, I always like to start with this, is um, with your cooking life, when did you know that you wanted to be a chef? Like, what, when did you kind of get that feel that this is what I want to do with my life? You know, as a kid growing up in Haiti, when I get to the state, uh, washing dishes for my friend, and uh, the financial rewards, the first day I get my first paycheck, I said, I would love to be a cook. Really? Not a chef, just uh -huh. a cook. Uh-huh. I was also a dishwasher when I started. Good. <laughs> so that's where the passion and the love started. Uh-huh. And then when you first started, did you have like a certain idea of like, I'm going to be a restaurant chef or what in your mind did you foresee where you would be? I, I foresee myself create a Mission Star restaurant. Uh, just so you know, did my internship at the Ritz Carlton with Pierre Doucin. And after that, I went to France to have the Côte de Cuisine because I want to be different. Okay. So I always have that uh, uh, Michelin star mentality to be different than everyone else. Uh -huh. But, you know, I've been in club my whole life. Okay. Uh, worked some of the most prestigious club in the world. All in Naples, the Ritz Carlton, Naples, the, uh, um, the, uh, the Registry, uh, Pelican Bay. Uh, Gulf Harbor, wow. Bridgewater, uh, uh, Montauk Yacht Club, Top 10 Club, United States, Mexico, and the Caribbean. Okay. Wow. So uh, I love the club scene. I love the members. Uh, uh, working in a club is like getting a different degrees uh, uh, because the members, the, s the palates, yeah. uh, it's so different. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You have people from the north, from the south, and they all have a different taste. Uh, you have to be creative enough to have all of them taste the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I uh, also worked down the road at Twin Eagles many years ago. I was the uh, chef down there. And, and what I didn't really love about the chef life of doing the country club was uh, so many politics. And then the members want everything, but they don't want to pay for it. <laughs> they want lobster and steak for lunch, but they don't have it in the budget. And, you know, they don't want to hear that you have a budget and a food cost. So I remember that kind of turned me off, but um, I remember like I liked that atmosphere because you always had good equipment, the best gear. You had all the the other staff were culinary graduates. Yes. And it seemed like everybody really cared about the job. And you got to get creative because it's all about pushing the envelope. Because at clubs, you're only good at your last hamburger you put out, right. or last fried gras, liquid nitrogen, whatever it is, because yeah. you're as good as your last meal you put out. And then with your career, did I hear that you said you didn't go to culinary school? Yeah, I went to La Vue and called the Cuisine in France. Okay, how long was that period? Um, about uh, 23 weeks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What were the hours that you kind of did that then? Um, Monday to Friday, 10 to 8. Okay. Yes. So it was kind of like a later in the afternoon type. Yes. Okay, because what I remember about culinary school, I went to Michigan. It was just like a two-year program. It was in Farmington Hills called Oakland. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. O Oakland Culinary Arts. But what I remember is we had to start school at 7 a.m. We'd do, like, pastry. We'd do, like, a little... Gamage. Yeah. You learn a little bit the in bullshit. sections. The yes. Yeah, yeah, different sections. But then at 2 o'clock, we're let go. Go home, take a nap, and then work my job at 4 o'clock. <laughs> so I remember the grind was like, there were some kids who like just went to school and they didn't have a job. And I totally thought that was the biggest mistake in the world because really that's where you're going to learn your bones is kind of yes, like in the field because school is one thing, but then putting it together in a restaurant is a whole nother animal. Yes, sir. So you kind of did that whole thing too where you were school and yeah. work, school yes. and work. Yeah, I worked for Joel Robochon. Wow. Chef oh, of the yeah, century, yeah. and uh, yep. you know that's what makes me different. That's what there are a lot of things people care about. I don't, uh -huh. and, you know, whether 
Most people think they are the better chef. I'm like, okay, good, uh -huh. God bless you. Uh -huh. But I am who I am. Sure. And I, I have my own, uh, I have my own niche. Uh -huh. I would never try to be somebody else. I've tried to be myself. Yeah. So that's what makes me different than everybody else. Sure, absolutely. You gotta have your own unique twists on things or yes, else sir. you're gonna be copying a textbook and nobody wants to do that. Yes, sir. Now, when you were doing the, uh, the whole culinary thing, did you go from school to restaurant to club? Is that, how did the transition go? Well, when I came back, I went back to the Ritz okay. to work with Pierre Dussan. Okay. And after that, I left. That's when I started doing between hotel and clubs. Okay. Yeah. And, and what did you think of the differences between hotel and club? You know, hotel is a lot of hours. But I think country club more cares about the employees uh, hotel, they just want to make money. I think clubs really care about their employees. In the hotel, would you get overtime a lot? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. a lot of these clubs, they don't want to pay the guys overtime. Yeah. And every once in a while during season, it happens. But I don't know. I remember it being kind of strict. Like, hey, don't let those guys milk the clock. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're at 2, 3 o'clock. Yes, yes. So I'm sure you're used to that. Yes, too, sir. Yes, sir. A little bit. So, and then with your experience going from the Ritz and that, when did Top Chef come calling? What uh, about I was the executive chef at the Montauk Yacht Club. Okay. And uh, did uh, you apply? How did no, the whole process? I never go? apply. I never fill out an application. I never did none of this bullshit. Okay. So they came looking for you. Uh, they went to James Beard. Okay. They said we want the best 15 chefs in the country. Wow. I guess at the time I just did a James Beard dinner. The James Beard house sold out dinner. Taste of the South. I guess that's how my name get in there. Uh -huh. They call me. I thought that was my friend playing game at me. I'm like, fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, if you're really from Top Chef, give me a number. i call you back. Oh, okay. And they give me a number, and it was real. They said, by the way, we want you to be in L.A. tomorrow. Wow. Wait and a were minute. You, were you like right away, I want to do this, or were you kind of 50 /50? Nah, because like I never see myself. I don't care about that TV. TV I hate stuff. that stuff. That's not who I am. Uh -huh. Because my food takes a long time. I don't know how to make nothing in 10 minutes. 30 minutes. Or That's whatever. not who yeah. I am. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And, yep. and it's um, classical. Yeah. So I don't know how to do it. So TV was one of, none of the things I want to do. Uh -huh. So I went through the process, went to the LA, you know what I'm saying, do that whole thing. You know, I didn't know if I want to do it. And they yeah. say, oh, by the way, we want you to go to Vegas for seven weeks. I'm like, holy shit. Wow. It's kind of well. Uh -huh. Now, when so. did you meet Chef Tom? Was it almost right away? Oh, no, I met Tom Clickio before that. Okay, but yes. I'm saying for Top Chef, did you meet him like almost right away for the interviews? Or was he No, no, no. I met him way before. Before. Okay, okay. He's not part of the interviews. No, okay, he doesn't okay. do none of this shit. I didn't know if he was. No, no, no. I met him way before that at the Montauk Yacht Club. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So when you go in and you're going to do this Top Chef thing, is there like a tryout or you're just in? No. I, it might be, but I didn't do none of this shit. Okay. So they're just like, you're filming, we're getting ready to cut now. Yes. Wow. Yes. So you were like really thrown in there. Yeah, I didn't do none of this crap. Till today, I don't think I fill out no application. Wow. See, I think some of the other guys, they probably had to go through tryouts. And oh, I don't I've do heard that. rumors that that's kind of how it goes. I, there, it probably is, but that's not what I did. Okay. Well, good I, I don't know. have time for that right, shit. Right, right. You're a working chef. Yeah, I don't so have time good. for that shit. <laughs> Now, when, when you're on the show, what did you think about this? Like, was there a lot of staging? Like, when they say, okay, you got 30 minutes, was it more time than that? No, that's real time. That's really what it is. Okay. Real time. I didn't know if some of this stuff is scripted nah. where, hey, this guy made the stock an hour earlier and it's ready to go. No, nah, it's I real time. Know. Okay. For me, it was real time. So what's the adjustment like? Were you just fine jumping into that? Or? You know, when I did the first, as, as you see, the first episode, I won the first episode. Uh -huh. uh, it, it, it's, go. yeah, you know, but after that, it's like, holy shit, you gotta do this, you gotta do this, you gotta yeah. do this. So, you know, and it, it's Vegas, the time different, and it, it's like, uh, don't have enough sleep, you know what I'm saying? and. Because, you know, with my experience, you know, I have to make a stock. I have to make a marinade. And he's yeah. just like, oh, fuck. This is not for me. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? But 
it is what it is. I mean, at the end, you know, for me, it's an experience of a lifetime. Right. Something I would cherish for the rest of my life, you know. Right. I think Top Chef gave me a voice I didn't have. Because of Top Chef, I was able to become culinary ambassador by the State Department. Travel the world, you know, I went to Italy with John Kerry. Yeah. You know, I carried the U.S. Talk about American food. Yeah. So I think that's the best reward I get from it. When you were on the show, did you feel people were sabotaging you to fail? I don't think so. I think those guys, they are real chefs. Okay. I think my season, this is why we won the Emmy. Uh -huh. All those guys are good chefs yeah. in mean, my season. Uh, I remember the Votaggio brothers. When I saw them, I knew they were going to be like in the running for one of the tops. They I know. I mean, even uh, uh, Mike Isabella. He's yeah. probably the baddest chef on this planet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jane Carroll, it's yeah. a baddest chef. Yeah. I mean, Eli, Kevin. Kevin is like a god of food. Uh -huh. So all those guys, they were just badass. Yeah. You know so, what I'm saying? So it was kind of like a little intimidating when you were No, not at all. I'm always me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I always myself. Yeah. Uh, work at the Montauk Yacht Club, top 10 club in the States, Mexico and the Caribbean. So I don't care. I don't get intimidated by that because I know who I am. Right. And I, I'm, I, I don't think top chef can define somebody. No. Some people think it is. It's I, like a stepping stone other things. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I just think those cooking shows that destroy careers because everybody think they can be on Food Network or on Top Chef, oh, but they don't want to put the hours. That's my honest opinion, and that's how I feel about it. And did you keep in contact with some of the contestants? Did you oh, yes. stay in touch with yes, a lot of Yeah, them? I'm in touch with Michael Voltaggio, with Hector. He's my poppy because okay. Hector was my roommate and Kevin was my roommate. Uh -huh. I was doing an event for Haiti. Uh, uh, it was Valentine, donate profit of your dessert for Haiti during the earthquake. Mike, Isabella, help me. Hector, uh, Eli, Kevin, uh, uh, Martin Noblia. I still did. Actually, I did, did an event with Martin at the Detroit Athletic Club. So we still cook, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all about timing. Because, yeah. you know, uh, uh, our lives is priority. But if we have time, we play around because food is medicine. And we get in the kitchen, we just cook, just, just to cook. I love it. Cook just yeah. to cook. Yeah. You know, no dream. criticize, no ego, just badass chef kicking ass. And being on the show, do you got like Padma's cell phone number? Or no, I don't. You keep in touch with I you? don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I heard she's like, a, like almost like chef level and can do anything too. She's a good cook too, right? That's what I heard. Don't know yeah. how true it is, but that's yeah. what I heard. Well, the, but God bless her, you know, to be able to eat that much food and be that skinny. Right, and, and so many years the show's gone on. You know, like for me, it's like I've followed many seasons, but I think like after years I kind of dropped off. You just get too busy. I can't watch all these episodes. <laughs> but, it, you know, like who stuck out to me uh, was Chef Hung. Like when I saw him and he deboned the chicken in like a minute, I'm like, this guy's going to be a powerhouse. Yeah. I Like when I saw him... I remember I, w I was surprised with that. I saw Richard Blaze didn't win. I thought he was going to win his season, and he didn't. Richard Blaze is sweetheart. I love him. Yeah. Uh, actually, I did uh, so many events with him. Mm -hmm. Taste of Tennis. Yeah. Uh, I see uh, he's got these burger places popping up and yeah. doing different things. Yeah, yeah. So he's a very busy guy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. You know, it, you know uh, um, since I left Naples, I left. You know, with this hurricane bring me back, I think it's an opportunity for a lifetime. Yeah. Uh, you know, I cook for the hurricane. I cook in town for the black people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's giving back, uh, mindful eating for my beloved community. That's my pet project. That's met with Congress about this project to see what can I do to give back to this community to give me life. Because right. I was a kid from Haiti on a boat, landed here. I mean, those people love me, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. living the American dream because of what those people of Naples do me. So right. Naples is very close to my heart. This yeah. is my home, my love. Yeah, and the food's great. Yes, so and the great people's great. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the people. That's what, that's why I think Naples is the gem. And then um, it's a unique place. I mean, if you look at what those people, how they get together in this hurricane, man, this is a mind blowing. Yeah, they're rebuilding so fast. They're rebuilding and everybody's supporting everybody. Like, let's think how much food, clothes, like people take people in their home. It just like, this is like, 
this is next level stuff, yeah. man. Yeah. How nice pe- Naples oh, people yeah. are. You know what I'm saying? And I remember me and my friends were talking about the bridge to, you know, Sanibel, that it's going to take years. They did it in like less than a month. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? I mean, I know it's not open to the public, but, you know, for people to get back and forth, they're building like a temporary bridge to get over. And I never thought it was going to be that fast, but just people unite and come together and get things done. This is what make United States beautiful, man. That's people right. get together, man. Yeah. I mean, the land of immigrants, people work together. I mean, that's what, that's what I love about America. I love to be an American. It just like, oh my God, so there's so many opportunity. opportunities. I can always say that I'm who I am because I'm around the Pratt. And then I received a call about somebody uh, not too long ago was doing a vet looking for a black chef. I said, no, nah, I'm not your guy. I'm a chef. I'm not a black just chef. like, you didn't want to be classified. Nah, right. nah. Yeah. I'm Rondo Pratt. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I'm not that guy. But if you need a chef, I am your guy. Uh-huh. If you need a black chef, I'm not that guy. Yeah, well spoken. I yeah. Mean, you know, you put him in the place. Yeah, yeah. Because I think I'm where I'm at, not because I'm black, but because I'm a chef. Sure, sure. I think that's what make my situation unique. To be able to live the American dream, I mean, a kid like me from Haiti and have so many opportunities. Like yesterday, I met with Congress, tell them what I think in the food bill, what I would like to see in the food bill. Wow. This is what I would like to see in it. That's awesome. I mean, it, it, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Now, if we went back in time, where were you and what was going on when COVID hit? What were you up to around that time? Uh, around that time, I was running a club. Was that uh, Texas? No, and uh, Carmel, Indiana, same oh, company. Okay, okay. And you know, it was it was it was it was kind of unique because uh-huh. the members again were so supportive, support the club. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think we were busier than he was a real restaurant doing to goes. But there was probably a shutdown period where. No. Oh, really? They just no. let it go. I mean, we shut dining. Yeah. But we still doing to go. To go meals, guys. To go meals. Okay, okay. I mean, you know, clubs have minimums. They have to use their minimums. Right. And they want to support the clubs and I think that's that's a unique situation. Yeah. I remember I cooked for some people at Bonita Bay and you know what they were doing? They were like supplying the members with wine. You know, cuz they have a ton of wine bottles and whatnot. So they were selling them at cost and then also they were like butchering whole tenderloins and they could buy like racks of lamb all ready to go for them to cook at their house. Yeah, we I do a market. That, that we do a market. Yeah, that was yes. amazing. Yes, sir. So you kind of did something similar to that? Yeah. Where you had pre made meals plus they could buy raw? Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. And then how long before the operation opened back up and you were up and going again? Oh, probably almost. Probably eight months. Okay. Six, eight months. And, and did you go through this thing where some employees were scared to come back? Or was it just like a two-man show where you had nobody? No, nah, like? those guys, they're cool. They're all, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. They're all Trumpers. <laughs> <laughs> Get into politics already. Okay. No, no, no. I mean, they're all my guys. They, they didn't believe. <coughs> they didn't believe in that whole COVID thing. They yeah. think that COVID thing is. Did, by the way, did you actually catch COVID where you couldn't smell and taste and all that? You know what? You know, the funniest thing ever, man, uh-huh. I'm telling you the honest truth. I don't know if I had it or not. Uh-huh. Well, I, I could say I definitely didn't have it because I didn't lose my smell and taste. And I was almost working every day during COVID. I mean, I was way too busy to even think about that, it. That's what I'm saying. You're so busy. You're like, I'm fine. Yeah. So I'm, like, I'm, I'm not even like no temperature. As long as I can taste, I can do my job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 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 I mean the honest answer, I don't know if I had it or not. I don't think I caught it. I really I don't, don't think, think so either. If I did hopefully I didn't pass case. Hopefully I didn't pass it to no one else. Yeah, but I'm saying like if you had, you don't remember a period where you couldn't smell and taste. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that means you must have if you caught it. A very light. Because that was one part. I had 28 employees have it. Wow. I don't know if it was laziness or if yeah. it just like, 
oh, there's free money. If you have COVID, you get paid. I don't know. I don't know. There was a lot of that. That's funny you bring that up. There was a lot of that where employees are just like, I'm staying home. I'm collecting a check. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I mean? you heard that with the restaurant. Yeah, so That's I don't it. know, but I didn't have it, and I was way too busy and uh-huh. to even think. Another scenario is like, let's say it was like a bigger operation, like you said, maybe 20 people. There was like this chain reaction where one guy got it, and then he passed it to everybody else. So they were dropping like flies. The staff was one day 20, and now it's only six. So I'm saying I heard a lot of scenarios And then, that. you know what? The funnier thing, the operation didn't stop. The operation keep moving. Right. Sometimes I even think it get better. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, it was scary, though, because you didn't know what to think, you know? It's like when I do my, you, like, you know, me and Ron are friends. You know, we follow each other. He knows what I'm up to. I see what he's up to. And he probably noticed I was in all these houses wearing masks. And it's like, of course, us as chefs, we don't want to wear the mask. But you need to do what makes other people feel comfortable. Comfortable, yes. And you need, you know, I got a child to support, so I'm going to work. Yes, If people yes. want me to be there, I'm going to be there. And if they want me to follow strict rules, I'm cool with that. Yeah. I've, I even went and worked in one house where they had a physician assistant that was with the group. They made me do the swab test before I walked in the door. No problem. I did it, and I passed the test, so life goes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, there was a lot of weird things that happened. But for me, my business basically doubled during COVID. So it was actually, for me, COVID was a good time. Even though a lot of people suffered and, you know, maybe a lot of people were out of work, if you were in the private sector, they would want you to be a chef and go into the property and cook for them at a rental. So what happened is a lot of businesses were like mobile, where they were working from their laptops in a house. So they'd rent a house, there'd be like 15, 20 people all on their computers. And I'm like, guys, dinner's ready, let's go. So they'd all come to the table and put their computers down. It was pretty cool. It was a lot of businesses that went on with life and they just worked in Florida because we were wide open. Yeah. So so it was kind of a blessing. Yeah, it it was kind of a blessing to be in this state. So I don't know if you went back and forth during COVID. Did you yes, I did, but my business never stopped. I mean, okay. COVID was just another day at work. Right, right. Yeah. That's the way I looked at it, too. Yeah. And so tell me more about what you're up to today and your projects, because I think I seem like you're involved with like a spice company now. There's a lot of little things you're up to. Yes, so yes. Try to fill us all in. I have so much going on now. I'm, I'm with First Service Residential. Uh, we tried to open the quarry, the food truck. And, you know, I have a new show coming out. Uh-huh. I'm taking 12 chefs on the tour, my friend. Uh-huh. Wherever the chef lost the competition, I'm going to fucking leave them there. <laughs> okay. Okay. They need to find their way out. Uh-huh. Okay. So there will be one chef standing. Now, is that going to be like something that you kind of put on yourself or is it through like a food network? The food network. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's what I figured. That's yeah. Better. Wow. That's, yeah. That sounds cool. I would not do that to my friend if he was my own show. Right, right. Leave them in the middle of the desert, have them find their way out. Uh-huh. That sounds interesting. <laughs> so, so tell me about the spice and what all their other things you're doing. Yeah, so far we have, the, we have that and we have the meat company. We're working with Rastelli. I uh, have a Thanksgiving dinner coming up uh, where I get the recipe and they have the stuff I did in clubs where they reach people and people can just order it online. Okay. So, All right. yeah. Well, what about, but I mean, you didn't tell me about the spice company. Tell me about like, what are you actually doing as far as the spices? What, what are they specifically branding the, and what you're putting out? Uh, the Valido Spice okay. is a spice company. Uh, we take spice people don't think about and make it to what people who look like me will like. Okay. Uh, granted, it's not a bad thing to say like our taste is different uh, than white people. So the spice, where there's garlic powder or onion powder or uh, Montreal steak seasoning, mm-hmm. chicken seasoning, but there's so much into Goya. Mm-hmm. This is what most people look like me use, even the hated Goya. 
because they don't popular. have because they don't have no choice. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So we will no one will never compete with Goya, mm -hmm. but we can create something similar. So this is where the Valido Spice is about. This is what it's about. Okay, okay. To sell with people who look like me, who talk like me. But you're customizing kind of the seasoning to be different than what they could buy in the store. Yes, sir. So with that being said, are you doing some that are like low sodium or no salt? Because a lot of these it's spices all no sodium, as salt. you know. Way too uh, much salt on a lot of those spices. With mindful eating for my beloved community, this is one of the things I'm tackling 22 and 23 because too many people like me have diabetes, hypertension. Mm -hmm. So we want to cut sodium out. That's a good idea. Want to cut salt out. Yeah, yeah. So this is what yep. Valido Spice was about to provide all that. Okay, okay. No, that sounds like a good idea because I think if you're going into like grocery stores and you're kind of doing your shopping, all these spices, when you taste them on your meats, they're way too salty. They're way too salty. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's like I feel like a lot of companies need to do a little more with kind of making it like a low sodium one and then just kind of like, okay, if you want the regular, you could have the regular. Yeah. But so the objective is marketing to people who look like me. I mean, everybody, it's for everybody, but he marketed to people. Health conscious. Health conscious yeah. to looking for something they cannot find at the store, only come to Valido Food. Okay, and that's kind of like an online yes. purchase kind of thing? Yes, online. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then what about as far as this food truck? You didn't fill me in on what kind of foods you'll be doing. Uh, we're going to do New American, okay. what they're like, because... We don't have a common cell kitchen, so it, everything has to be fresh every day. Fresh, made it, serve it, we make it, and find something they like. Okay. Uh, they go from almost, I'm not going to say fine dining, but to a food truck. Uh -huh. So. How many employees will you have in that truck at one time? Like five, maybe two? two? I was going to say, <laughs> it looks like maybe two. I don't know if you're thinking five. I no, thinking. no, two. Okay. Yeah. And, and then is this going to be like a thing where you're going to do like local breweries, celebration? No. What areas this is just do? until the club ready. Okay. So maybe three months, four months until the club ready. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't know if it was going to be like a thing where you're going to take it on no. the road and no. kind of do that. This is not moving. This is a temporary fix. Okay. There yeah. You go. All right. Well, Chef, thanks for coming on. I'm so you excited, know, man. Uh, uh, uh you know, I'll continue to follow your journey, and I yes. always enjoy seeing all your events. And Good. I hope you'll enjoy watching uh, my season. Good. <laughs> Excited. Love Naples. Come visit Naples. Absolutely. Everybody enjoy. All right, Chef, you have a great night. Thank you, sir. We'll see you.